Amos chapter 5. Hear ye this word. God speaking. Which I take up against you. Wow, this is a great book, isn't it? There's no pansies and lilies messages here. No love of God from these churches today. You think everything in the Bible is all about the love of God. Even a lamentation. O house of Israel. So Amos chapter 5 is a lamentation. Just as much as Jeremiah's lamentation. The virgin of Israel is fallen. It's not a good fallen. She shall no more rise. So you're down for the count. TKO. She is forsaken upon her land. She's going bye-bye. She's going to go into captivity. There is none to raise her up. No one's going to help her. Even Judah doesn't even step in. For thus saith the Lord God, the city which went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred. Nine hundred. Gone. And that which went forth by a hundred shall leave ten. Ninety to the house of Israel. You had these vast numbers coming into the land. But what's left? No, it looks like almost about 90% are gone. Thus saith the Lord. Again, like he said in verse 3. Hear ye the word. For thus saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord. Unto the house of Israel. Now here's a charge to the Jews. Here is before judgment falls. Seek ye me, that's God, and ye shall live. What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's got to be God to live. It cannot be religion. It cannot be asterisk. But seek not Bethel. That's where the golden calves are. That's where all that we read in chapter 4, you know, they were bringing their money. They are bringing their Thanksgiving with leaven. That's where their church was. Sometimes you got to step out of your church to get to God. And that's hard for some religions. Because their church is what they claim to be a representative of, if not, God. And he's telling you, listen, leave your religion, leave your God, leave your, leave your worship. Nor enter the Gilgal, pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity... And Bethel shall come to naught, nothing. Your religious center will be gone and vain and nothing. And if you didn't get it the first time, seek ye me. Seek the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Got it? What's the message? And ye shall live. What more is there? What message is there? There's no baptism. There's no church service. There's no giving. It's seek the Lord. Least he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it. And there be none to quench it in Bethel. When God sets a fire, you ain't going to put it out. It's what that fire is. God never spoke about hell like that. Ye who, by the way, that fire also shows up in the tribulation period. Burns up a third of the trees. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. They're not doing what they're supposed to. They're not doing proper judgment. They're not being righteous. Okay, you who are not doing right. You that are rebelling against God. Ready? Seek him. 
All right, so who's the him? Let's, let's get this straight. We've seen three Sikhs so far in eight verses. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion. Now, I don't know if we're going to finish this chapter tonight. You run into a trouble here. Who made the seven stars in Orion? What if you were taught evolution? What if you were taught it was Baal? That leaves a problem, doesn't it? And that leads to a public ministry in 2016. When you preach to people on the street, you better preach to them who God is. You better preach that, oh, receiving Jesus Christ. That's perfectly fine. A Roman Catholic, a good Roman Catholic will receive Jesus Christ at least once a week, if not every day of the week. Now, is that what we're talking about receiving Christ? What if we what if we preach this message? Seek him that maketh the seven stars Orion on the street, and we don't proclaim who that God. You can have all kinds of gods. There's all kinds of gods that are creators in the world today. But we already know by Amos' statement through seek ye me and seek the Lord, hear ye the word, for thus saith the Lord God, for thus saith the Lord God. We know who Amos is talking about beyond a shadow of a doubt, Jehovah. That narrows it down. And that's what gets Christians and people upset. You nailed it down. There's a place called hell. Oh, no, 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 no. No. You're going to turn people away. Don't say that. I'm going to get my friends upset. Don't make it one specific place. Don't mention God. My friends, they worship other gods. They, you know, they have Mary and Allah and all that. You might upset them. Amos comes out and says to the Jewish people who know God, are supposed to know God, there's one God that you're to seek and seek him. He's the one that made the stars. You know what Psalm says about that God? He calls every one of them by name and NASA can't even find them all. And NASA's got it wrong because they give them numbers. God says, I give them names. Can you imagine how many stars there are out there and God has a name for all of them? Can you imagine what his baby book of names looks like? You know, when people, they find out that the, uh, the wife is going to have a baby. They, you know, first, you know, they'll go buy a baby book, names. They start looking through the names a lot. Think about all the names that God has written. You think Chronicles is bad? What about one of them books up there that said the books were open? One of them books up there has a list of all the angels' names. All the star names. All those that are born again names. All the names you find in Chronicle. All the names of the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're just talking about one star system up there. Orion, who is the hunter. You know why he probably mentions the hunter? You know who Orion is to the Jewish people in Cana? That is the God of, oh boy, here you go, just went out the window. Um, Nimrod, the hunter, the mighty hunter. You know that, that, that constellation, that, that shooting the bear? I think it's a bear, a Leo. And not only that, not only does he make the stars, Turneth the shadow of death into mourning. What God can do that? And maketh the day dark with night. Uh-oh. Amos just went back to Egypt and put up one of the plagues that's going that had happened in Egypt and it's going to happen in the tribulation period. And called for the waters of the sea. And pours them out upon the face of the earth. Amos, you mean B.C. 70, 787, you knew about evaporation of water? You couldn't know that, you dumb, you dumb idiot. Follow God. You don't know about those things. 
Amos just told you that water from the rain comes from the seas. And he probably didn't have a high school diploma or college education certificate. And he told you something before you even knew it in your college or high school. Okay, you ready? Just in case you think another God made the stars, you think the other God, the Lord is his name. Boy, Amos names it down. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. Acts 4.12, I believe that verse is in it. And he closes chapter 4 with, is his name. You know, Catholics do have door-to-door -door ministries now. They have Sunday school just like the Baptists. What you do for the Lord, better be the Lord is his name. You better do it for Jehovah, not anything else. That strengthens the spoiled against the strong. That's a wartime reference. You know, spoils when you conquer the, the, the people and then you go take what they have. So that the spoil shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. A judge that does right. A person that seeks true is not liked. That's why they hated Jesus. He spoke truth all the time. And whatever judgment he gave was right judgment. Man, he nailed those Pharisees down exactly who they were. And he wasn't wrong a tiny tittle of a bit. He nailed them down. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, you step down on the poor, you, you clobber them, you walk all over them. It's not right. You take from him burdens of wheat, taxes, overcharging, Ye have built houses of huge stone. It costs a lot of money. When you look at the houses all around this area, they weren't made of stone. They were made of mud, made of straws, made of anything but stone. Remember, it was a rich man that had a cave with a stone in front of it. The Bible proclaims. But ye have but ye shall not dwell in them. You build them, but you're not gonna live in them. How many times have you seen that statement so far from Genesis to Amos? You're going to do this, but you ain't going to get the consequences. You're going to marry a wife, but you're not, she's not going to be your wife. You're going to plant a vineyard, but you ain't going to drink and eat the grapes thereof. You're going to do this, but you ain't going to get the results thereof. When you live in rebellion against God, you are not going to get the good fruits. What well, good fruit is, you go out, you plant a garden, and you, you know, the good fruit is... You get the vegetables and the fruit from that garden. But if you rebel against God, you're not going to get it. You're not going to enjoy it. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, ripe vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. Again, he's pronouncing judgment against them because they are rebelled against them. Chapter 4. They've got the wrong service to God. They've got a religion. And God's against it. You say, well, you look around today, all these religions, they're so prosperous. Are they really? And where is their eternal soul? That's not prosperity to me if, it, if it's not in New Jerusalem. If your soul is in hell, you think they're enjoying wine? That rich man said, just give me a little drop of water. He's preaching against the social injustice. And the cure for social injustice is chapter 5, verses 4 through 6. It's not putting a Democrat in office. It's not putting a Republican in office. It's not putting an Independent in office. It's putting God in charge again. Is stepping away from man and putting God. Man is a sinner. 
Oh, we got the right candidate for you. And God says, for all have sinned, come to the shore of the glory of God. Why don't you put Jesus Christ in, the one who is sinless, the one who's sitting at the right hand of the Father, the one who always wants to do right, the one that will step in the courtroom and say, he's guilty, this is the charge, do it. That put a wet lot of sin away from the nation, wouldn't it? But we'll put a man in who can be bribed, who can say, oh, isn't that guy just so poor? Isn't it the background he gave him? Oh, poor baby, let's help him out. God won't do that. That's why they don't want God. For I know your manifold transgressions. You know what manifold is? You ever look at a car engine? The manifold is that pipe, and it goes to the exhaust. But if it comes out from depending on how many car, how many cylinders your car has, and what if your if your car is a V8, you got a four point manifold on each side of your engine. It has one source or one outcome, but oh, it comes from several sources. Manifold it would be like. When you got an extension cord, you got an adapter that plugs into the wall, but you got five or six outlets. That's a manifold. It comes from one, and it comes of many. Sin began with Adam. Okay, but look how far it's manifold itself. Look how far sin has gone rampant. We are having crimes in this country today that would cause an old person 200 years ago to have a heart attack to even think about reading something like that in a paper. Manifold. Transgressions and your mighty sins. So you think that today our sins are, are look how wicked and perverse Jesus has got to be coming because look at they were the same way back in BC 787. Just as wicked. They were killing babies too. But you know what? They were killing babies both in the womb and out of the womb. And they would even come in, rip up, rip open the womb and kill the mother too. They take babies and jash them over cliffs. If you had leprosy, they cast you totally out. At least today, you get some kind of hospital, some kind of care. They afflict the just. Well, that's not right. A guy who's doing right, they afflict him. He say, show me an example of that. America, a small business owner. He does right. He pays his bills. He gets his licenses. He gets the permit. He does everything he's supposed to, and they still put more charges and more laws and more things on him so he can't operate that business as his business. They take a bribe. I like every once in a while you'll see on the Facebook, they have a picture there. Of, you know, they'll say something like how NASCAR, they were, the, there's. Their, their uniform with all their sponsors on them. They want to see the people in Capitol Hill wear their, wear their clothes with all their sponsors, you know, all the oil companies, stuff like that. You know why America's the mess they are? Because the people up there in the White House, the people right there in Congress, the people that are in Capitol Hill, oh, hey, pass this law, I'll give you some. And it don't have to be money. You know, Jesus Christ will never take a bribe. That's what's wrong with our government. I'm going to say something that's going to get people upset. I don't vote. Oh, I just turned off many people now. 90% of the people just fell flat on the ground. You know why? Because they're all sinners. They may be the right man today, but what about tomorrow? Paul said that uh, Demas, he, he had a guy that followed him all over, didn't he? He spoke well of Demas, didn't he? And one day he just walked away. Bye, Paul. I'm going away. What about if you put that guy in office, causes him to, to step away from being a Christian? How's that one? How would you like to have your vote count that way? 
You helped a Christian walk away and turn to thievery and lies and bribery and Satan. And they turned aside the poor in the gate from their right. That is judgment. In the old days, when they had these cities, they had the gates like Lot. They would sit in the judgment. Bo Boaz practiced this in Ruth chapter 4. He went to the gate with witnesses. And this is where the elders, this is where the town hall was. I have a criminal case. I have this kind of land grant, land grant case. I have this will case. Will you guys sit down and hear us out? Here are poor people coming to the gate where the judges are. And saying, I have this cause. And the judges have been bribed. The, ju the, the judges have treated the just with affliction. The judges are manifold in transgressions. Are you going to get proper judgment from that? I trod none. In America, justice is supposed to be blind. She's not supposed to have her eyes open. She's not supposed to see. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time. No smart person is going to speak. Because he knows they're not going to listen. He knows they're not going to care. So why waste my breath? And according to, to the prudent guy in the book of Proverbs, he's gonna he's doing right by God because he's prudent and it's like God. I'm not messing with them. I'm not getting involved with them. So you know. This Christian is running for office. If he was prudent, he wouldn't be doing it at all. He'd be serving the Lord and going all the world and preaching the gospel, not trying to get money so he can get votes. I hear certain people, they're Christians and stuff like that. I haven't seen one thing where they've gone through their crowd and get up there and say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved before all the people and before CNN and all those tell I didn't see him do that once. You get a man like that, maybe I'll step up to the voting booth and vote. Now look at this. Seek. How many times have you seen that word? Seek good and not evil we're looking at the judges we're looking at the people of the land we're looking at those who are wicked and the children of israel seek the lord seek to do good seek god seek jehovah and you should live why because there's coming a time that the army's coming they're going to come against the city and you're going to die and you will die in your sins and that is perishing, and perishing ends up in hell. Seek good and not evil. Now remember, evil is a result of your sin. So when he says seek good and not evil, what's he telling you? Stop sinning. If you stop sinning, there'll be no evil and there'll be good. You can't get good from sin. And one of the good things is treating people right, treating people proper, being just with the people. That is good. You overlook color, race, skin. In order to ask you on a job application, are you a Hispanic? Are you a black man? Are you of Indian? That is a violation of the Bible. Who cares? What skin color are you? Who cares what you are? Are you qualified for that job? Well, no, but I'm going to get it because I, oh yeah, that's injustice to the person who's qualified. And you'll stand before God one day. One of you will be guilty. How many people have gotten things in America that they don't deserve? In my Bible, that's called a theft. It's called a thief. And you'll be charged as such. Remember, Judas walked 
33 years with Jesus, and he was a thief. And Jesus allowed him to continue. Jesus knew all along. He kept telling his disciples, haven't I not chosen you 11 and one of you? Haven't I chosen you 12 and one of you is the devil? You want to do good? Break away from these sins that we studied here. That ye may live. Where have we seen that? That's over in this chapter. Living is by coming to God and living is by seeking good and not evil. Seek the good and not evil that ye may live. And so the Lord, all right, there's, there's a lot of lords out there. Paul said there's another Jesus. There's another gospel. So Amos says, Seek him that made the stars. Seek him that giveth darkness. Seek him that the Lord is his name. Seek him the Lord God of hosts. All the angels. All the stars. All the creation, all the armies. What God can do that? Shall be with you as ye have spoken. So you want God to be with you? You're supposed to do good. You're not supposed to sin. And when we do, we have an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. When we sin, if we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Again, it comes down to that sin. Yes, we're going to sin for all have sinned. But how do you acknowledge your sin? Do you bring a sacrificial golden calf to the altar? Or do you bring something that God approves the altar? Do you bring religion or do you bring God about your sins? What do you do with his sins and how do you feel about them? Listen, you may have one sin in your life. You may do that to the day you die, the day the rapture happens. But man, if you hate it and, and you fight it and you put it in prayer and you tear over it and you still can't get the victory over it. Your motive, in the eyes of God, you try. But we're looking at people who are involved in sin and don't want to have nothing to do with God and doing religion. And God says, your day is coming. And we're going to break off in the, in the chapter, to finish this chapter another night. Your prince will be coming on a white horse and he's not coming for you. He's coming quite opposite. He's coming to fry you, to burn you, to kill you. The prince on the white horse is going to come, but not for sinners. The Lord God of hosts shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil. Seek the good and not evil. Hate the evil. If you're going to sin as a sinner, hate the sin. You hate it. Don't blame it off on God. God hates the sin and loves it. No. You hate your sin. You defy your sin. And who knows, maybe one, guy, one day God says, okay, that's it, that sin is gone. Then you'll have something really good to rejoice about when that sin is gone. There are some Christians out there, they, they get rid of that sin and they miss it. Hate the evil and love the good. Look at the complete opposite of verse 14. Now you tell me someone who said a prayer. And God loves those sinners too. 
I said a prayer, but I enjoy doing what I'm doing. After what we just read, I will doubt your salvation. And I will have pretty good Bible scripture and doctrine to say, I doubt it. I'll go far as 99%. 1% between you and God. Somebody comes up to me and says they're saved and they enjoy their sin. Not according to Amos chapter 5. You are ordered by God to hate your sin. You are ordered by God to try to do good. Remember Paul said that, that he writes there, that I do, uh, I don't want, uh, my body doesn't do, and that which I don't want to do, my, you know, that, that long thing. You know, he's telling you, I sin, but I don't want to do it. I try not to do it, but my body still does it. I hate my body when it does it. Oh, I want to do so right. There it goes. I'm doing it again. I hate it, but I do it. I hate it, and I do it. That's what Paul's saying. Hate the evil, love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. You better get those judges back. And you better get right judges. And you better bring the people. You know what you may even have to do? You may have to swallow a little pride and bring up previous cases that you had before and say, you know what? We got to correct. You know, you can't do that with pride. Matter of fact, you can't do that in America. They got a law, uh, Judas Prudence, is it? No, what's the law that you can't be tried a second time for your crime? What if you were wrong the first time? What if there was a great revival in America today? Three quarters of your court cases by the by the law of the court, you couldn't bring back the case again by the order of the law. You ask me, I tell you right now, every judge that in the 50 states of this country ought to sit on that bench with a blindfold. Or even still, you have the court put out without the judge, without the jury, with transcripts. And the judge reads the transcript. He doesn't hear no voices. He can't tell if it's a male or female. He can't see if they're colored or white. He can't see if they're, if they're young or old. All he does is read. Plaintiff says this. Defendant says this. Witness number one. You can't put no thing in there. Just plaintiff, defendant, witness number one, witness number two. And you can't even tell what side that witness is on. Lawyer said. Lawyer number two said. And you put that in writing, the judge sits in his chambers or the jury sits in their chamber and they read it. You have no idea who or what it's talking about, but the, how about that for a change? That'd be blind justice. Establish judgment in the gate. There's got to be something wrong with the judges. And we've already read. It may be that the Lord God of hosts. Look at Amos, what he said about God. Verse 3, Lord God. Verse 4, the Lord. Verse 6, the Lord. Verse 8, seek him that maketh the seven stars Orion, that turns the shadow of death into morning, maketh the day break in the night, calls for the wind and the waters of the sea, and pours them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Verse number 14. The Lord, the God of hosts. Verse 15. The Lord God of hosts. You know who we're talking about here? You can't be an idiot about it. You can't say, oh, it must be Allah. You can't say it's it's Mary. You can't say it's Joseph Smith. You can't say it's Kellogg Flakes. You can't say anything. But the Lord Jehovah, <coughs> the God of Israel. The Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Something wrong with his boys. Remember when Hosea spoke about Ephraim? Leave him alone. 
half of Manasseh went into the land that wasn't their, wasn't their land to be in? Two and a half tribes already before they even got in the land and sinned against God. And they walk across the Jordan River. What's the first thing they do? They make Ed. Now let me explain to you if you don't know your Bible what Ed is. Ed was an altar. Which God told them never to make. So they've already settled with another altar on the other side of the Jordan River. Now they got complete religion up north. Israel's messed up. And God says to them, you better seek me. You better not seek that religion. You better seek me. You better seek the creator in me. You better seek that is good and not evil. You better hate the evil and love that which is good. You better establish a judgment land. You better get back to me. That's God speaking. One day God is going to stand as your judge. Gentile or Jew. Saved or lost. Now you can face God as a judge. As your father and you his son. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You could win or lose crowns. You could get or lose rewards. Or you can face the God, the creator of all the earth and all that there is, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. You can face him and find your name not written in the Lamb's Book of Life and have him cast you off into the lake of fire which burneth forever. The Bible did say that we read the other night, prepare to meet thy God. What Amos said in chapter 4 when we talked about prepare to meet thy God from last night, we're carrying over to chapter 5. That God we just read about, that Amos spells out so clearly, backs up what he says in 4.12. Prepare to meet thy God. Which God is it? We just saw it. Amos spells out who God is beyond a shadow of a doubt. Even the atheist couldn't miss it. 